effect. We're going to break down what that means for all of us here in Bear County. And the largest stimulus package in modern American history has passed through Congress. We're going to take a look at what it covers amid the pandemic. Live from case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Police already seeing an increased number of calls of businesses not following the stay home work safe order. City Director of Public Affairs Jeff Coyle says that there have been 86 complaints and 69 violations. However, he says every business contacted regarding violating the order has subsequently complied, so no citations have been handed out. When case at 12 asked how police could enforce complaints, he said, quote, Violation of the mayor's emergency order is a class C misdemeanor, which is punishable by a fine of up to $2,000. Each incident is handled on a case by case basis, though, and officers are using their discretion in issuing citations, end quote. And we now have the latest numbers of confirmed cases of the coronavirus here in Bear County. Of those granted testing, there are 69 positive cases reported here, and sadly, a second person has died in Bear County. Officials say that person was a woman in her 40s. And in the entire state of Texas, 352 positive cases and eight deaths. A third case confirmed in Bernie today as well, increasing that number. And across the United States of those granted tests, there were more than 42,000 cases reported of coronavirus and at least 471 people have died. Some of those hardest hit areas include New York, California and Michigan. All those places have issued stay at home orders in order to flatten the curve of infections. We're going to have an update on the national response in our next half hour. And during this pandemic, health officials in the city say that blood donations are essential operations, imploring people to keep their appointments. Blood banks around the city have been reporting a high number of cancellations. Organizations say they cannot replace a canceled appointment because they receive a spot for each individual that can keep blood banks low across the city. And as we just said, the stay home work safe order for San Antonio now in effect. It started at midnight last night. And that means everyone in Bear County can only leave their homes for specific essential activities. Important to mention, this is an all in effort to slow down the spread of the coronavirus. RJ Marquez tells us what it means to you and how it will impact all of us. <laughs> The new stay home work safe orders are the most restrictive that have been put on the city and the county since the coronavirus pandemic started. The orders will remain in effect until April 9th unless they are extended. Here's a breakdown. Restaurants will stay open only for delivery and curbside orders. Grocery stores, pharmacies and other essential businesses like a big box store will also remain open. The order directs residents to stay home and only leave their homes for exempted activities. So what does that mean? Exempted activities include health and safety actions like buying groceries, medicine, food, or any other necessary services or supplies. Residents are also allowed to leave home for outdoor activities like walking, biking, or hiking or walking your dog as long as they stay six feet away from one another. You can leave for work if your business is exempted. Here's where the work order comes in. Exempted businesses include healthcare and government services, education and research facilities, construction and transportation, like VIA are exempt. Other examples include trash and recycling collection, mail services, building maintenance, plumbers, electricians, and exterminators. Services for people that are economically disadvantaged and services such as laundromats and dry cleaners are also exempt. Add to that financial institutions like banks, childcare services like daycares and funeral homes are exempt as well, meaning they can stay open. Worship services can only be provided through video or remotely. So what happens if someone violates the orders? The city says police are not going to pull you over if you are outside of your home and you do not need a permission slip to prove you work for a business that is allowed to remain open. Open. They expect the public to follow the order and will focus on the businesses that should be closed. Keep in mind all public and private gatherings that consist of anyone other than your household or family are prohibited. You can see the full order on KSAT.com. In other news, in the early morning hours, Congress finally reaching a deal on that massive relief bill to help jumpstart the economy. It is the largest economic stimulus package in modern American history. And it all comes as President Trump says he'd like to reopen parts of the economy by Easter. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest. As the sun rose this morning, many Americans waking up to new hope. Good news for families all across America. At last, 
we have a deal. On Capitol Hill, Senate leaders announcing that Congress and the White House reached an agreement on an unprecedented $2 trillion spending package meant to offer relief to workers and business owners suffering under the COVID-19 pandemic. The deal comes after five days of heated marathon negotiations, providing over $800 billion in support for companies, big and small, and boosting unemployment benefits, as the leading Senate Democrat told MSNBC. We um, greatly reduce the restrictions on applying for unemployment. It's going to be very simple and very easy. And second, we give the states much more money to hire people so they can take the new loads that are coming. It also includes a one-time payment of $1,200 directly to most American taxpayers. The stimulus check would definitely help with my mortgage as well as our two car payments. It would definitely help our family. The package includes some strings too an oversight committee for big business bailouts, and a provision that businesses controlled by the president, vice president, members of Congress, and the cabinet don't receive federal funds, both key elements Democrats insisted on. The bill can now be passed and enacted within days, adding to economic support already provided by the Federal Reserve. President Trump also hoping to ease restrictions on social distancing that could allow some businesses to reopen by Easter. Easter is our timeline. What a great timeline that would be. But the virus is still spreading very fast in the U.S., and the nation's top expert is offering a different view. That's really very flexible. We, we just had a conversation with the president in, in the Oval Office talking about, you know, you can look at a date, but you've got to be very flexible and on a, on a literally day-by-day day and week-by-week week basis. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Remember that we have all the information you need on coronavirus right now on ksat.com. We're following all the latest stories around the city, the county, the state, the country. Just go to the home page and click on the coronavirus tab. It's at the top of your screen. And new at noon, one man in the hospital after a scary early morning wreck. Police called to I-10 at 1604 westbound around 7 a.m. after a motorcycle crash. Police say that the motorcycle driver was speeding, changing lanes, and actually tried to pass drivers on the shoulder. That's when he hit a drainage ditch, lost control of his vehicle. And that's when he was launched from the motorcycle. He suffered life-threatening injuries, but police telling us that he was actually brought to the hospital. And at last check, he is alert, he is talking, and he is in stable condition. Now, lanes were closed but have since reopened. We now know the name of the man who was shot and killed on Monday morning, just a few blocks north of downtown. Police identifying the victim as 73 year old Roland Valdez. Emergency responders were called to the intersection of East Jones and North Alamo, where investigators tell us two masked gunmen walked up to a pickup truck and opened fire on the man who was sleeping inside the vehicle. That victim transported to Bamsey. He later died. The gunman took off afterward when those shots were fired. They are still at large. If you have any information that can help police in this case, you need to call them immediately. And we're getting a closer look at the woman accused of shooting and killing her husband yesterday afternoon at a Northside motel. Now, officials say the victim was a U.S. Border Patrol agent, John Marburger, and that man's wife, the suspect, Sherry Marburger, she's now charged with murder. Now, the shooting happened at the La Quinta Inn and Suites off North Loop 1604. Police telling us that Sherry called 911, saying a man in the room had been shot. That man, the victim, rushed to the hospital. That's where he later died. Police say it appeared the pair were the only two in the room at the time of the shooting, and Sherry was later arrested. The victim had been a Border Patrol agent for 21 years. Exercising can be difficult if you're feeling all cooped up at home in quarantine, but... We will answer a San Antonio question about how to get some much needed movement. And the Olympics officially been postponed. Obviously a big deal for athletes in the sports world, but what about the financial impact? Larry Ramirez joining us with a breakdown. So if you're not self-isolating or unwell, Experts say it's actually okay to go outside right now and exercise with your family. Now, it is important to remember social distancing and to keep up with good hygiene practices like washing your hands when you get home. This advice may change in the future, but right now it is still okay to go out and get some sunshine, walk your dog, and go for a walk or run. We are being encouraged to make some kind of effort to move and get some kind of physical activity. Getting 30 to 60 minutes of moderate to brisk activity can help your immune system. There are currently many gyms offering online workouts as well. Now, if you have a question, you can still go to ksat.com and submit it there. Also, you can sign up for our SAQ newsletter by going to ksat.com slash newsletter. 
Due to the emergency orders the city and county announced this week, San Antonio area schools are now pushing back the date when schools will restart. Now, most schools planning to hold classes after April 24th. Yesterday, we reported that Laverne ISD was one of the first to extend their break, and now many others have followed suit. Most of the larger districts like NEISD, Northside ISD, and SAISD all set their reopen date. To find out when other districts are planning to reopen, just head over to KSAT.com. And we know that we do have that stay home, work safe order, but that doesn't mean you can't leave your house to go outside, go for a walk. Those are exempt activities and it is set to be a nice one out there. It's going to be really nice. We're finally seeing some sun after a lot of morning fog, but it is going to get pretty toasty out there this afternoon. We've got a nice streak of warm days going this week and we'll talk all about when we might see a little bit of a cool down coming up in just a couple of minutes. But first, checking on the aquifer. It's up one tenth of a foot since yesterday and in the pollen count, mold is moderate. Hackberry mulberry are low, but oak high today with a count of over 6,000. I'll be right back with a look at your forecast. Here's some other news for you. The Cadbury Bunny's out of work after his job went to the dogs this year. Well, one very special and specific dog in particular. Take a look. I want to introduce you to Lieutenant Dan. He is the new spokes animal for the iconic Easter candy. He was named after the character from Forrest Gump because the pup's back legs were actually amputated because of a deformity. He hops around on his front legs like a bunny when he's not using his wheelchair to get around. Lieutenant Dan beat out dozens of other furry competitors for the role. It is an annual Cadbury commercial contest. Aw, that's so cute. And fun fact, Forrest Gump, one of my favorite movies. Really? Yeah, there you go. All right, we're learning a little bit more about our friend Full Matt. of fun facts today. Katie, you have any fun facts for us? Yeah, what is your favorite movie? I guess we have to ask oh, now. Twister. Duh. Of course. The weather, the weather movie. <laughs> yeah. But I am a sucker for animals in wheelchairs. Totally gets me every time so cute. Lieutenant Dan. Apparently it got them too. Lieutenant so. Dan. Yeah, very. <laughs> congratulations to him. That's it. That's what we need. We need some of that. Yeah, mixed in that here. kind of stuff. Uh, and I'll continue to maybe provide a little bit of a distraction here with your weather forecast. We've had a pretty warm and humid week so far and humidity really starting to build in today. And that's what factored into some pretty dense morning fog uh, that hung around through about 11 o'clock. It's starting to go away now, but uh, made for a pretty foggy start to the day today. We're 78 now at the airport, just shy of 70 degrees down in Pleasanton. And here's today's time lapse showing that fog. You can see it rolling in. It settles in. It hangs around for several hours. And then as we get into the 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock hour, it starts to go away. Fog is fog is very cool. It can sometimes be very finicky in where it decides to set up, but that made for a wonderful time lapse. I'm sure Adam Kasky will be showing that off later today as well. 78 now at the airport under completely sunny skies. So we've turned things around really quickly from foggy to completely sunny. There is still some lingering fog though uh, down to the south of Highway 90 south of San Antonio. That's what our visible satellite is showing us. But this fog will continue to go away over the next several hours and everyone is looking at nothing but sunshine as future cast shows as we head into the second half of the day and that will help to warm us up very efficiently. We will see high temperatures uh, this afternoon climb into the low to uh, mid 90s 93 here in San Antonio. Some spots off to the southwest. You could be even warmer than that, uh, maybe mid to upper 90s and we'll keep the warm weather around for the next few days. High temperatures tomorrow also in the low 90s, upper 80s, low 90s as we get closer to the end of the week. But look what happens as we get into the weekend. We'll bring our temperatures back down closer to where they should be this time of year. Our average high temperature is in the mid 70s, so we've been trending much warmer than average for the past few days, and that trend will continue through the end of the week before a front rolls in. Now, this is not going to be a front that brings in a ton of colder air, but we will see some drier air arrive by the weekend, and that will make things much more seasonable and comfortable out there for us. Not a whole lot going on weather wise here in the Lone Star State, really through the southern tier of the US. We've got upper level high pressure or a ridge of high pressure that is centered just to our south. This is a very kind of almost summer like weather pattern that we're sitting in. Typically during the summer months, we'll get this heat high to hang around. That's what keeps us very hot and our weather fairly quiet because this ridge of high pressure doesn't allow for any of these low pressure systems to move through and that would bring us better chances of some rain. So through the day tomorrow, this heat high will hang pretty 
moving closely, but late tomorrow and into Friday, it'll start to move off into the Gulf of Mexico as it kind of moves off to the south. That will allow for a low pressure system to swing across North Texas. It looks like we'll have a small window at some showers, especially very early Saturday morning. But as this arrives on Saturday, what we'll see here is just a very nice drop in our humidity, and it'll make things much more comfortable out there for the upcoming weekend. But in the meantime, things staying nice and toasty today, unseasonably warm. High temperature in San Antonio around 93 between about 4 and 5 o'clock today. Clear skies for the rest of the day, but staying warm this evening with a nice little breeze here and there. Tomorrow, another round of morning clouds. We'll do that again on Friday as well. And then here comes that Pacific cold front that will bring us a small shot at an isolated shower early Saturday, then drop our humidity. Early next week, we'll have a better chance at some isolated showers, maybe even a few rumbles of thunder. We'll talk more about that coming up next half hour, guys. Thank you so much, Katie. And uh, coming up, the Olympics in There Tokyo. we go. Huh? We are talking sports. That is coming up in just a few moments. We can refer to it as Tokyo 2021. And with postponement, a local Olympian has an important message for the people of San Antonio and for the sports world. And speaking of basketball, an NBA star reveals his mother now dealing with the coronavirus, posting an important message on social media. You're not going to want to miss it. I got an answer from President Bach that he agreed 100%. We agreed that we would hold the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics by the summer of 2021. Prime Minister of Japan Abe Shinzo making the tough announcement that the 2020 games are postponed in big board sports. Speaking from his home here in San Antonio, Spurs guard Patty Mills offered words of encouragement for his fellow Australian athletes now that the summer games are on hold. Patty was preparing to represent Australia, but like most athletes around the world, is sequestered for the time being due to the outbreak of the coronavirus. In this video posted on his Twitter account, Patty supporting the Australian Olympic Committee and their proactive approach in handling this crisis. If someone was to ask me if there was a call to action, I would say this. Whether you are an Olympic athlete, any athlete, or just someone that likes to participate in sports to stay fit and healthy, please stay at home and keep your distance. The better we can control this virus, the better we can look after each other. And the better us athletes will be able to prepare to represent you once the Tokyo Olympics arrive. Tokyo together. Now that the Tokyo Olympics are on pause, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich remains committed to coaching the men's U.S. basketball team in 2021. That's according to USA Basketball Managing Director Jerry Colangelo. Earlier this year, Colangelo and Pop announced a 44-man preliminary roster that includes three Spurs. NBA star Carl Anthony Towns says his mother is in a coma after contracting COVID-19, and he's urging the public to take the virus seriously. Minnesota Timberwolves player shared his story on Instagram. Towns' parents fell ill last week and went to the hospital after several days. His father was released into quarantine at home, but Towns said his mother began deteriorating. After taking other measures, doctors told him his mother would have to go on a ventilator and they put her in a medically induced coma. Officials are urging Americans to practice social distancing to migrate the virus spread, but some people are ignoring those precautions. Towns said, quote, my mother is the strongest woman I know, and I know she will beat this, and we will rejoice when she does, end quote. It is official the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo were postponed to the summer 21 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. After getting a pretty strong heads up on Monday, the president of the International Olympic Committee, Thomas Bach, and the prime minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, confirmed that the Tokyo Games scheduled for this summer are being put on hold. That was revealed during a conference call yesterday in a video message. Bach addressed the athletes and told them there is light at the end of the tunnel. Dear fellow athletes, let me start with the good news first. We all will be able to celebrate the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, even if it's only in 21. But uh, finally, you can be sure that you can make your Olympic dream coming true.
According to reports, the delay could cost Japan as much as $5.7 billion in extra cost, which includes, of course, maintenance at all those arenas and venues. Guys? That's a big chunk of change yep. that they're walking away from right now. Absolutely. All right, thank you so much, Larry. Many people around the country hunkering down amid orders to stay at home. We're going to get an update from around the country. And from jeans to face masks, we hear from a business owner filling orders to help those medical professionals on the front lines. There are now more than 55,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. and new areas are seeing the rapid spread of the virus now. And while President Donald Trump is pushing an aggressive timeline to get the country back open for business, state and local leaders are saying Americans need to brace for things to get even worse. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest. The COVID-19 pandemic continues its aggressive spread across America and beyond. And one of the fastest infection rates is in the state of Louisiana. Governor John Bell Edwards pleading with the federal government for help, saying As he's I running out of time. Before, the trajectory that we're on uh, is very problematic. Uh, the growth rate that we're seeing exceed the capacity to deliver health care. Health officials also alarmed at the infection rate in New York City, the epicenter of the pandemic in the U.S., 60 percent of the country's new cases coming out of the city. And NYU's medical school now announcing any student that's met their requirements may be able to graduate early to join the front lines as soon as possible, while federal health officials announced new guidelines for anyone who recently left New York City. Everybody who was in New York should be self-quarantining for the next 14 days to ensure that the virus doesn't spread to others, no matter where they have gone. While President Trump is pushing an optimistic timeline to get the country back open for business, new stay-at-home orders are rolling out today in Vermont, Wisconsin, and Miami, as All state and local officials urge residents to prepare for things to get worse. But the premature pronouncements that were, that we can see that light at the end of the tunnel, I would say we're just entering that tunnel right now, and we need to be prepared for some of the darkness that is ahead. Overseas, hundreds more dead in Italy and Spain. Both countries' death tolls now higher than China's, and India, the world's second most populated country, now enforcing an unprecedented nationwide 21-day stay-at-home order of its 1.3 billion citizens, the largest ordered in world history. Health officials say the big spike in numbers we're seeing right now is a reflection of what was happening two weeks ago. And that's why right now it is still so important for everyone to continue practicing social distancing. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. And here's a shocker. Britain's Prince Charles, Queen Elizabeth's son, has now tested positive for coronavirus, too. According to a statement from his office, the 71-year-old has shown mild symptoms, but is otherwise in good health. His wife, Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, tested negative for COVID-19. Both, though, are self-isolating at a home in Scotland. Prince Charles' spokesperson says it's impossible to say just how the prince contracted COVID-19 due to the high number of engagements he's had recently. But Queen Elizabeth herself remains in good health in quarantine, too. And with cases of the novel coronavirus growing here in the United States, health officials are telling Americans to prepare for more potential social disruptions. Here's ABC News' Dina Stella Gatera with the latest. The unknowns regarding the potential dangers, transmission and impact of COVID-19 on our day-to-day -day lives can feel unsettling and uncertainty around the virus has sparked concerns among some people. These emotions and even some fear are not necessarily a bad thing. Their role is to protect us and help us prepare for dangerous situations. Experts say you shouldn't turn your emotions off. Instead, you should learn how to manage them properly. Protect Experts at the Center for Disease Control and Prevention say the most important thing is to empower yourself with facts and combat the spread of misinformation and rumors. Follow reliable sources like local health departments for the latest developments. Listen to the experts' advice. Remember that disease can make anyone sick regardless of their race or background. 
Watch out for any signs or symptoms like fever, cough, or difficulty breathing. Seek medical advice if you develop these symptoms or have been in close contact with a person infected with COVID-19 or if you live in or visited an area with ongoing COVID-19 spread. Focus on what you can do to protect yourself, such as washing your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds and practicing social distancing. Think rationally and recognize when your worries are preventing you from doing your day-to-day -day activities. If you feel overwhelmed, connect and find support from loved ones. With this Medical Minute, I'm Inez de la Quatera. On the campaign trail, Senator Bernie Sanders says he is planning to participate in the next Democratic presidential debate. That's according to the New York Times. It is the latest sign that the senator plans to stay in the presidential race despite losing several key races to former Vice President Joe Biden. And with many experts saying that he has no realistic chance at winning the nomination. However, the Democratic Party has not released any information about an April debate, which they usually do a month in advance. The party has not said how the pandemic could affect upcoming debates. And back here at home, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City, a much different picture now than what we saw earlier this morning. We had a huge wall of fog earlier we couldn't <laughs> see anything now it is gorgeous out there i i yeah it's it's sometimes really cool to see how quickly the fog can move in and then how quickly it can move out we've got a ton of sun on the way for everyone this afternoon and that will set us up for another unseasonably warm day with high temperatures back in the low 90s this afternoon so we're in the upper 70s now but temperatures have been climbing very quickly each hour since we lost that fog and we should be in the mid 80s here pretty quickly the fog has not completely cleared out here in San Antonio and Bear County. We are OK, but down in Pleasanton, your visibility is still at three miles now. And as we look at visible satellite, all that white down there to the south and east of San Antonio, that is the fog that is still left over. It will continue to clear out over the next couple of hours. Everyone's seeing a lot of sun and that puts our high temperatures today generally in the low to mid 90s. 93 is your forecast high for San Antonio. A few upper 80s there in the hill country. And if you're off to the southwest, you could easily be pushing upper 90s by later this afternoon. We'll continue to see things stay very warm and rain free for the next couple of days. This is the latest drought monitor that came out last Thursday. So tomorrow morning we'll get an updated drought monitor and we're going to be very excited to see that because this big swath of red right here, extreme drought down to the south, that should shrink a little bit because of the rain we saw late last week. So we'll have an updated drought monitor for you tomorrow. We do have some rain chances in the planning forecast. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Katie. Consumer news, the stock market doing really well today after that historic uptick yesterday. Now, the stimulus bill, big agreement between two sides of the aisle. Let's take a look at the. Well, the Dow up, Ooh, looking good, up more than 5% right now, more than 1,100 points, about oof, an initial loss a few days ago last week, but it has bounced back good. And like we said, this is all on the heels of that agreement on the historic economic stimulus package. Meantime, people are pitching in all around the world to help fight the spread of the coronavirus, and that includes businesses in different industries and sectors. One denim company, for example, stopped production of denim and they switched over to making surgical masks for healthcare professionals. The owner and founder, Zach Meyer, says that he started getting messages about a mask shortage and he knew he had to do something. Assistant directors at ERs, um, anesthesiologists, just different sectors of, of healthcare um, have reached out to me and placed orders because, you know, some have zero supplies, some have limited supplies, and the ones who do have limited supplies are being told to reuse these N95 masks. Myers research CDC guidelines. He found a supply of government issued army rip stop fabric and he got to work. He says the material used in the masks does meet requirements. Myers says this isn't about profit. He says he just wants to help. And Apple telling staff that some of its retail stores may reopen in April. The tech giant detailed the possibility in a memo, but a spokesperson would not comment. The plan also outlined a plan to let many employees continue working from home through at least April 5th. All of Apple's 458 retail stores outside of China closed in recent weeks because of this pandemic. Apple has reopened its 42 stores 
in China since. And still ahead on the news at noon, San Antonio Hall of Fame induction ceremony postponed, but that doesn't mean that the live auction is postponed as well. What you need to know and how you can help out. Well, among many sporting events and productions, Wonder Woman 1984 being pushed back because of this pandemic. Warner Brothers changing its June 5th debut to August 14th. The studio also postponing indefinitely the releases of Scoob and In the Heights. Lady Gaga is delaying the release of her new album because of the coronavirus pandemic. Chromatica will be set, was rather was set to be released on April 10th. The singer says she doesn't feel right about releasing the album with everything that's going on in the world. So she wrote on social media. She knows her fans are disappointed, but she asks them to practice kindness in these trying times. Lady Gaga hopes to announce a new album release date soon. And yeah, let's take a live look out of the Elmo City. Not a lot to smile about, except for when you look outside. <laughs> Finally, a great shot out there. 78 <laughs> degrees. I'm smiling ear to ear. It's going to be nice and warm this afternoon, so yeah, don't be afraid to get I was cooped up all day yesterday. Finally, in the afternoon, probably in the hottest part of the day, I did get outside, and that sun just feels so nice. So be sure to treat yourself to a little bit of outdoor time this afternoon if you can. Just make sure you keep your distance. No change in the aquifer level since yesterday. A uh, new level came in. We're at 672 even. And then the pollen count oak is still high today. Mold down a bit from where it was yesterday, but oak is definitely still our pollen uh, problem allergen. And don't forget, we are in the peak of oak season here. It usually peaks late March, early April. So we are in the thick of it. Hopefully, though, we'll see some relief from oak pollen soon. I'll be right back with a look at your full forecast. Welcome back. Well, we've had kind of a string of lousy weather, and then yesterday it looked like the skies opened. <laughs> it was really nice. I, I went for a walk after work, and all the neighbors were out. We all kept our distance, but it was so nice. There was even people setting up lawn chairs in front of their houses just to soak up the sun. Yeah, it's amazing what a little sunshine can do to lift your spirits. And we've got plenty of that on the way this afternoon. So it'll be another nice afternoon and evening to get outside for a little bit. If you can, temperatures are rising quickly. We had that dense morning fog, but as that has cleared out, temperatures have risen about 10 degrees in the past hour, hour and a half or so. So it's going to be a quick warm up as we head into the afternoon hours. Winds have become southerly. Our humidity has increased over the past couple of days. And so that's what helped to contribute to that dense morning fog that we had out there today. Bit of a breeze up in the hill country where your sustained winds are between about 10 and 15 miles per hour. Everyone else winds closer to 5 to 10 miles per hour right now, but uh, through late this afternoon, early this evening, there will be a nice little breeze in place. Sustained winds about 10 to 15 miles per hour, so that breeze um, will help to keep the air moving around just a bit, and it'll be nice because it is going to get pretty toasty uh, over the next several hours. High temperatures today in San Antonio expected to climb into the low to mid 90s, but plenty of sunshine on the way this afternoon and skies will stay nice and clear this evening. Next few days, things will be staying pretty warm, unseasonably warm. You've got to keep in mind that our average high temperature this time of year is in the mid to upper 70s, 76 degrees to be precise. And over the next couple of days, we'll keep temperatures well above average. 91 your high tomorrow upper 80s, but just shy of 90 degrees as we get into Friday. We are starting to pick up a few more clouds, though, as we get into the latter part of the week. But by Saturday, you'll notice a chance of rain that will really come very early Saturday morning and a slight drop in our temperatures to a high temperature around 80 degrees, and it'll really start to become much more seasonable by this weekend, and that's because we will see the arrival of a Pacific cold front. So this is a front that's coming from the West Coast, so it doesn't have a lot of cold air behind it, but it does have some drier air that will be filtering in. So that's just going to make things feel much more comfortable out there as we get into the weekend. You can see our dew points uh, by Saturday dropping into the 30s and then the 40s on Sunday. That is feeling nice and dry, and then our highs will be near 80 degrees. It's going to be wonderful out there this weekend, but humidity will make a nice rebound as we get into early next week. But then we have rain chances to talk about. So we have that Pacific front coming through this weekend. As we get into early next week, another upper level low moving in from the West Coast will uh, get a little bit closer to Texas here. It'll hang around a little bit longer, and so that should help to kick in chances of isolated showers and storms as we get into the early part of next week. A stray shower is not out of the question 
on Sunday. But I do think we'll see our best chances of rain start to work into the forecast Monday and Tuesday as that upper level low moves in a 20 to 30 percent chance of some showers. So it's not going to be very widespread rain, uh, but some rain will be possible as we get into the early part of next week. And that's when we'll see our temperatures stay closer to average for this time of year. Until we get there, things staying very warm with a lot of sunshine the next couple of days. Do keep in mind, though, tomorrow we'll start off with some morning clouds again on Friday as well, but we'll see some clearing each afternoon, and that's what just helps us to stay nice and toasty. So highs in the low 90s for the next couple of days before things become more comfortable by this weekend. Guys. Thank you so much. It is uh, beautiful to see the sun, nice vitamin D. And, well, speaking of the sun, football season just a few months away, pending any changes, and you can't talk the NFL right now and not mention the Tom Brady news, arguably the greatest quarterback to ever play the game, changing teams. Now he is opening up about that move. And a local NFL player sitting down with KSAT 12 Sports about his rookie season in the league. Our Larry Ramirez bringing us part of that conversation. That's next. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Tom Brady was introduced as the new quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He dodged questions, though, about what number he would wear during yesterday's conference call. But the Bucks website is now selling number 12 Brady jerseys. Tampa Bay wide receiver Chris Godwin also wears number 12, but said he'd happily give it to Brady, a six-time Super Bowl champion. Good move because you probably want to be on his good side as a receiver. Anyway, Brady shocked a lot of people leaving the Patriots after 20 seasons for the Bucks. During his conference call to promote social distancing, Brady praised his new team. There's some really talented players here on this offense that, um, you know, that have very unique skill sets. And it's really my responsibility to, you know, I have one ball and I got to be able to deliver that ball to the guy who can, who can do something with it. So, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of ground to make up because, you know, I haven't worked with, you know, these players and I'm going to have to learn what they do and, and their body language and how they like things. And, um, you know, that's part of the challenge. And, you know, it's, it's unfortunate we're going through in our world. Um, it presents different challenges for all of us. So, again, as soon as we have the opportunity to all be together in one place and we can really start working toward that, and that's, that's what I'm going to do. Sunday afternoon, we caught up with the Green Bay Packers linebacker Ty Summers, the former Reagan High School quarterback turned linebacker at TCU and drafted in the seventh round by the Green Bay Packers in 2019. Ty played in all 16 games as a rookie, mainly on special teams, and finished the regular season with four total tackles. Then in the divisional round of the playoffs, he had two total tackles in the Packers win against the Seahawks. Now we spoke with Ty via FaceTime and asked him to sum up his rookie campaign. I mean, it was crazy. It was it was long. Yeah, I will say because I mean, playing. I think we played twenty two games. I think including preseason. Yeah, I want to say yeah, twenty two games. And so that was double anything that I'd ever played previously. You know, college or high school. And so that was that was one thing. But I feel like there was such a cool experience getting to go into those different stadiums, mm -hmm. thinking players that I've watched on TV. Heck, I've played with on video games, you know, all that kind of stuff, and be able to see them line up against them or um, just watch what they do, you know, as well as you be on the same team as some of those guys. Um, so that was a pretty, pretty exciting experience. With Packers starting inside, linebacker Blake Martinez leaving for the Giants. Ty will challenge for a starting position next season. The San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony scheduled for March 28th has been postponed until February of next year, but their online auction continues through April the 3rd to raise money for their nonprofit organization, including everything from sports memorabilia to vacations at sanantoniosports.org. $400,000 worth of items, um, all at bargain prices. So as people are sitting at home wondering what to do, uh, go to sanantoniosports.org, register for the auction, and you'll be doing a great job to help our kids in San Antonio and probably get some really, really good deals. All right, SA Live is here. It's all good. Guys, back to you at the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Larry. You stole our line. We're I gonna, know. Right across from me. We're starting to get used to this. Well, Larry, you know, we were Larry got and the hook in. And, and SA Live gets the stage. <laughs> A lot of folks are making meals at home, and that's what you guys are talking about.
That's, That's right. right. We have got a way to save you some time and make your meals last. We are teaching you the do's and don'ts of prepping freezer meals. And Erin Chase, I mean, my goodness, she's done this several times on the show, showing us the, you know, the right way to kind of go about this and making the meals for the entire week where all you got to do is just pull it out of the freezer and just kind of go. And to segue out of sports, she hits it out of the park every time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we like that. And we also want to know oh. what new or weird dishes have you tried in the past two weeks during social distancing? Tag us at SA Live KSET on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I know some people are doing some weird stuff. I mean, you, you, yeah, you get creative. Some of the things I've seen are kind of side eye me. <laughs> I know if Mike's got some that, weird stuff. Oh, he's our favorite little weirdo, <laughs> okay? And hey, don't fall asleep. The king of scares, Freddy Krueger himself, actor Robert England shows us his latest venture into the world of terror. Hear what he has to say about playing the iconic role and what it took to pull it off. Don't go to sleep. All right, don't have a green thumb. We got a few tips that you can use to get your garden growing strong inside of your own home. And it's something that folks have had a challenging time shopping for, hand sanitizer. So, one distillery is helping out to make sure first responders have the tools they need to stay safe. This is really great. How cool is that? So you actually can go there as a, as a customer, and you can get some, you know, some beverages to go, but then they're also helping the first responders. Yeah. Great stuff. All that and more when SA Live.